Hey, Trig students, how you doing? So we've been looking at these uh, fundamental identities for a while, and it's time for us to mm, put some more tools in our toolbox, okay? Time for us to develop some more identities. So what we're going to do today is we're going to develop or build or discover or prove, if you will, uh, six new identities. Now, uh, sometimes in the process of doing this, my students will, their eyes will get really big and they'll say, oh my God, I have to do this every time? No, you don't, okay? What we're doing is we're gonna develop some identities. It's like, it's like building a tool, all right? If you're a carpenter and you get yourself a really good hammer, that's great. You don't have to get a new hammer for every single nail that you drive. Once you've got a good hammer, you just use that hammer. So today what we're doing is we're building the tools and in the future we'll use those tools and we don't have to build them all over again. So if today gets a little, uh, a little detailed and a little technical, it's okay. We only have to do it once. So now let's start doing it. Let me move over here. So, uh, I'm going to start by looking at the unit circle, unit circle right here with a couple of angles. And uh, so those red, uh, the, the red uh, angles going up there, uh, we're going to call one of them uh, alpha and one of them beta. Now, I want to be clear what beta is. Beta is not in standard position right now. Beta is the angle between the two uh, red uh, rays that you see there. Okay, alpha is written in standard position, but beta is not. So the, the angle that's written in standard position, the, the top one, is actually alpha plus beta, which is why we have the particular coefficients that we do there. Or I'm sorry, not coefficients, coordinates that we do. Uh, we have the point one zero, and, uh, and then the, uh, where alpha hits the unit circle, that's the point cosine alpha sine alpha. And then the other point that we have there is cosine of alpha plus beta and sine of alpha plus beta. We doing all right so far? Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to draw another angle down here. I want to draw negative beta. So there's negative beta. And so uh, what are the coordinates of that point where it hits the unit circle? Well, it's going to be the cosine of negative beta and the sine of negative beta, right? But the cosine of negative beta is the same thing as the cosine of beta. And the sine of negative beta is the same thing as the negative sine of beta because cosine is even and sine is odd. So therefore, our coordinates here are cosine of beta and negative sine of beta. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a couple of chords on this circle. Now you might want to think back to your geometry a little bit. So these are chords in this circle and the chords that we've drawn there uh, correspond to central angles in that circle, and the central angles are both of measure alpha plus beta. Just look at them. And if that's the case, then those chords have to be the exact same length. They have to be congruent. All right? So, if those chords are congruent, that means the distance from where alpha plus beta hits the unit circle, that top point, and the point one zero has to be the same as the distance from uh, where uh, angle alpha hits the circle and where angle negative beta hits the circle. So how do I calculate those distances? With the distance formula. Yeah, okay, it's just a, it's just a, a, a modification of the Pythagorean theorem. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, looks uh, looks kind of messy so far. I have the square root of cosine of alpha plus beta minus one. Remember what the distance formula is, all right? It's the square root of your difference of x's squared plus the difference in y's squared, all right? That's, that's what the distance formula is. So we see there that uh, uh, we have the cosine of a plus b minus one, two x coordinates squared, plus the sine squared of a plus b. It, it's the sine of a plus b, and I'm saying a plus b, I'm sorry, alpha plus beta. It's the sine of alpha plus beta minus zero squared, which is simply the sine squared of alpha plus beta. And then on the right side of the equation, we have cosine of alpha minus cosine of beta squared. Those are the two x coordinates, plus sine of alpha plus sine of beta squared. Those are the two y coordinates. I said sine of alpha plus sine of beta squared because we're doing sine of alpha minus negative sine of beta. All right, 
So now let's uh, let's just do some algebra here. So uh, first thing we ought to do is just square both sides and your radical sign goes away. And the next thing we need to do is, uh, well, let's just multiply everything out. We got a bunch of squares in there, so let's get rid of them. And it gets so long that it breaks into two lines. Uh, now, um, you may be looking at this now and thinking, oh my God, this is so messy, but actually it's not because look a little closer. What you have is the cosine squared of alpha plus beta plus the sine squared of alpha plus beta. Cosine squared plus sine squared, that's just one. You have the cosine squared of alpha plus the sine squared of alpha, that's just one. You have the cosine squared of beta plus the sine squared of beta, that's just one. So those three pairs of terms there just turn out to be one, and we get a much neater equation there. Uh, the two that we have on the left, that's because we already had a one, a constant one. So one plus sine squared plus cosine gives you two. So two minus to cosine of uh, alpha plus beta is equal to two minus two cosine uh, alpha cosine beta plus two sine alpha sine beta, all right? Now it's a piece of cake. Just subtract two from either side, and you get that, and then let's just divide both sides by negative two, and you get this, and that's what we were looking for, okay? The cosine of alpha plus beta equals the cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta minus the sine of alpha times the sine of beta. That's the first. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna build six tools today. That's the first one. That's our first identity. So let's put that up at the top. So, um, <clears throat> So now I know how to find the cosine of the sum of angles. Um, what about finding the cosine of the difference of angles? Cosine of alpha minus beta. Well, this actually turns out to be really easy if we just build off of what we just did, okay? <clears throat> Instead of calling this alpha minus beta, I'll just call it alpha plus negative beta. And now it's converted to the cosine of a sum of angles, and I know what to do with that. I'm just gonna apply the, uh, uh, the identity that I just invented. So this is gonna be cosine of alpha times cosine of negative beta minus sine of alpha times sine of negative uh, beta. And uh, let's see, cosine of negative beta, cosine's even. So the cosine of negative beta and the cosine of beta, that's the same thing. And uh, the sine of negative beta, sine is odd, so that's the same thing as negative sine of beta. And if I'm subtracting, that means that subtraction is gonna turn into uh, positive and I end up with cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, plus sine of alpha, sine of beta, and that's my next tool. That's my next identity. Okay, so we're a third of the way there. We have the cosine of alpha plus beta, and we have the cosine of alpha minus beta. Hey, what about the sine? Let's find that, okay? Let's find the sine of alpha plus beta. Now what we're gonna use this time is we're gonna use our co-function identity, okay? Remember, the sine of anything is the cosine of pi over two minus that thing. So we'll take the sine of alpha plus beta equals the cosine of pi over two minus alpha plus beta. And now I can do a tricky thing where I just kind of regroup. I use my, uh, uh, well, first I distribute the, the negative there and then I'll use the associative property and I'll say this is the same thing as doing the cosine of pi over two minus alpha minus beta. So what that means is I have the cosine of the difference of two angles and I just developed that identity. So now I can use that. It's gonna be the cosine of my first angle, pi over two minus alpha, times the cosine of my second angle, beta, plus the sine of my first angle, pi over two minus alpha, times the sine of my second angle, beta. And then again, you have to say, well, what's the cosine of pi over two minus alpha? It's just the sine of alpha. What's the sine of pi over two minus alpha? It's just the cosine of, al of alpha. So that gets me sine of alpha cosine of beta plus cosine of alpha sine of beta. And now I have an identity for the sine of alpha plus beta. And now I have three tools in my toolbox. I think you can see what's coming next. The sine of alpha minus beta, right? <clears throat> so what are we gonna do here? We can do the exact same thing we did uh, on our second one. We're gonna say, well, instead of calling this alpha minus beta, let's call it alpha plus negative beta, okay? 
Now it's the uh, sine of the sum of two angles, and I just developed an identity for that. So that means I can call this uh, the sine of alpha times the cosine of negative beta plus the cosine of alpha times the sine of negative beta. Looking back at my even and odd identities, I know that the cosine of negative beta is the same thing as the cosine of beta, and the sine of negative beta is the same thing as the negative sine of beta, so that means this turns out to be sine of alpha, cosine of beta, minus cosine of alpha, sine of beta, and now I have the fourth of my uh, six identities that we're developing today. Okay, well, I imagine you know what's coming next, right? We've done cosines, we've done sines. Time for a tangent. Let's do the tangent of alpha plus beta. All right, so what's a tangent? Why, it's a sine over cosine, so let's just do that. Sine of alpha plus beta over cosine of alpha plus beta. And then we'll use the identities that we just developed to flesh that out, uh, to, to uh, um, extend the numerator and the denominator. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this fraction here and I'm going to multiply both numerator and denominator times 1 over cosine of alpha, cosine of beta. Or if you'd prefer, I'm going to divide both numerator and denominator by cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, and I get this uh, messy looking fraction of fractions. And although it's very messy looking, you can immediately tell, hey, look, there's a lot of things that just cancel out there. And I'm left with sine of alpha over cosine of alpha plus sine of beta over cosine of beta. Well, that's just tangent of alpha plus tangent of beta over everything cancels out in that first fraction. So one minus sine of alpha over cosine of alpha times sine of beta over cosine of beta. So we get this nice, neat little uh, um, identity for the tangent of alpha plus beta. And I'm going to put that up at the top as the fifth out of my six tools that we're developing today. And then finally, the tangent of alpha minus beta. And we're going to do the same thing that we did for the second one, the same thing that we did for the uh, fourth one. We're just going to call this alpha plus negative beta. And we're going to apply that identity that we just developed a second ago. So this is going to be the tangent of alpha plus the tangent of negative beta. Remember, tangent is also odd, which means the tangent of negative beta is the same thing as the negative tangent of beta. And when I plug that into both numerator and denominator, the denominator being 1 minus tangent of alpha, tangent of negative beta, blah, blah, sorry, tangent of negative beta, uh, I get the tangent of alpha minus the tangent of beta over 1 plus the tangent of alpha times the tangent of beta, and that's the final one in our new identities that we're developing today. Now, if you're thinking, oh my god, he went through that really fast. Yeah, well, okay, play the video again. Um, now, also if you're thinking, oh my god, I can't do this, I guess I can't do trig, no, that's not the case. If you can follow the steps here, that's really good enough, because what's important here is that we have these tools and that we know how to use the tools. Not that you are going to have to develop every single tool yourself. I mean, that's why we have, that, that's why we have mathematicians, to guide the rest of us. So. How do you use these tools? That's for the next video, all right? I think we've done enough in this video. Let's just be a little patient, and we'll get to that in the next one, all right? See you then. Bye-bye.